Hey legends, Blake here with another video and today I want to teach you how to breed Madaka rice fish or Japanese rice fish. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so first of all, credit where credit is due. This uh, particular method came from Dean's Fish Room via an article released by Aquarium Co-op. So I did not come up with this idea, but I have been using it for the last three or four months and I found it to be really highly productive. In the past, I was using just a normal acrylic spawning mop. Anybody who's bred a rainbow fish or other spawning mop fish would have known that these guys are really super effective and it did work to a degree with the rice fish. Uh, I've also used some floating plants such as water lettuce, something with a really nice dense root system which kind of mimics this to a degree and that's also worked pretty well. However, this method that I'm going to show you today works far better. And uh, going through what Dean actually said, this has been used for ages in Japan. So if the Japanese are doing something to spawn Japanese rice fish, then that's probably a great place to start. Okay, so to build a spawning mop for rice fish, this is what you're going to need. It's not crazy at all. You don't need any expertise, uh, specific tools or anything that you would not find outside the normal sort of household. Uh, the first one here is a pool noodle. You can steal some of your kids' floaties if, if they've got one. Obviously, they come quite a lot longer and just because I'm at a smaller desk, I don't want it to take up the whole frame, so I've cut off a section here. You're only gonna need about 2.5 centimeters or an inch, so you, you can easily just borrow someone's pool noodle if you need to. Uh, if it has been used in the pool, probably give it a good old, good old rinse first, but I've got a brand new one here today. Next up, some scourer pads here. These are gonna be found where the dishwashing liquid is in your supermarket. The cheaper the better because it's gonna be less likely to have any mold inhibitors or other chemicals in it, which might be nasty for your fish. I've got some nice square ones here, which were about six for 99 cents, something like that. Next up, these kind of intertwine, but they're also optional if you only have one or the other. I like to use a razor blade for the pool noodle, and I like to use scissors for the scour pad. Uh, of course, if you only have one or the other, they can be interchanged, but it's personal preference what you choose to use. So let's get in and make it super simple. First of all, we cut off about 2.5 centimeters or an inch of a uh, pool noodle. Just has to be enough that it's gonna float nicely and not sort of get sucked under the water at any point in time. That's as simple as it gets. Next up, we got our scour pad here and we're just gonna go ahead and cut a bunch of vertical sort of uh, sections in it. The more the better, but you don't want to cut them so thin that you sort of ruin the integrity of the scarab pad. And then you want to keep it about sort of half an inch or one and a half centimeters from the top, just so that it's not going to have a section that's going to fall off if you cut it too high. It's you don't really want to cut it too high anyway because it's not going to serve much of a purpose as you'll see with this next stage. So next up, you're just going to simply roll the pad into a tight bowl, a bit of a cinnamon scroll if you like, and that's pretty much it. And then that should, in theory, slide nice and neatly into the circle in your pool noodle. If you need to push it a little bit, that's even better. You want it to be nice and snug, otherwise it might fall out. Now, if you are extra worried about it falling out, you can, of course, use a little dab of hot glue in the top there, or you could use a rubber band or something to secure it a little bit extra. But for me, that's pretty much done. Then we just spread the legs out of this weird octopus creature, and that is how we make a Madaka rice fish spawning mop. Now, why is this more effective than a normal acrylic yarn spawning mop? Well, if you've ever seen Madaka rice fish, they actually carry their eggs externally and sort of wait for some roughage to actually remove them. They don't uh, go and deposit them somewhere. They just swim around and if things get sort of stripped away and stuck to plants, then that's kind of how they do it. So you want a surface like this that's going to be a bit more rough, a bit more coarse, that's going to actually sort of provide a bit more of an area for those eggs to be actively taken away from the uh, Midaki rice fish. So if you want longer sort of uh, octopus legs, you can absolutely cut them longwise this way. However, you're just probably not going to have as thick of a uh, circle at the top. So you might then have to use some hot glue 
awesome super glue to keep it in place so let's head out to my pond now we'll check out one of these in action and i'll show you what i do then to hatch out the babies okay so here you can see some clips of my pond and luckily my redaku rice fish mop here has yielded some eggs so i'm really happy about that once you find eggs there's really two methods that you could go ahead and, and put into place the first is you can actively go through pick out the eggs place them into a container or a hatching tank and uh, hatch them out that way maybe use some methylene blue to make sure they fungus they don't fungus over and you'll hatch out some medaka rice fish super easy second is if you've gone ahead and you've bought a pack of six scour pads and you have a length of pool noodle you can easily make up half a dozen uh, uh, spawning mops and swap them in and out as you please you can just take the whole spawning mop out put it into a hatching tank and it will float around getting a bit of water circulation as well which is never a bad thing when you're hatching eggs and then you can just replace them as you go and by the sixth day you should find that your eggs have hatched and you can slot it slot the first one back into the pond and keep cycling through like that and you'll have a pond or fish tank absolutely uh, bursting with such an underrated fish as the Manaka rice fish. So there you go guys, hopefully you like this little DIY video. It's been a while since I've done one, so if you do like it, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. All the best with your Madaka Rice Fish Ventures, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.